Welcome to This Complex Life, a podcast where we explore the intricacies of well-being and relationships. I'm your host, Marie Bakakis, an accredited mental health social worker, family therapist, speaker and mental health educator. Coming to you from the lands of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people, join me as we demystify mental health, break down stigma and navigate life's messiness and complexities one conversation at a time. And just a little reminder... Information in this podcast is for educational purposes only. Anything said should not be taken as a replacement for medical, clinical or other professional advice, diagnosis or treatment. This podcast is not a substitute for professional mental health treatment and advice. If you or someone you know requires support, please contact a mental health professional in your area. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome back to another episode of This Complex Life. I wanted to thank everybody for listening and for following the podcast and the podcast's journey over the last four years. One of the reasons I really wanted to change the way the podcast, the things we were talking about and the interviews I was having was because I know that therapy can be expensive. I know that accessing good quality advice can be hard and it can be very difficult to understand what's happening for ourselves based on really short Instagram carousels or TikToks or reels. And I've noticed that there are a lot of gaps in people's knowledge and understanding. And I think that this can lead to a lot of anxiety or worry or fear as people experience difficult situations or difficult thoughts or how they have changes in their mood and they think something's wrong with them. They don't really understand what's happening, how to handle it, and they don't know what's considered normal. And so through these interviews and through some of these solar episodes that I'm doing, I've been really trying to build that knowledge base and that skill set so that you, you listeners, uh, can learn something about how your brain works or how to make relationships grow and how to nurture them, how to have tough conversations. Or maybe you're listening to something and it's given you a sense of understanding of what someone else might be going through, which might help with some empathy. So every time I get an email or some positive feedback, it really helps me stay engaged and excited. And I feel like all the effort and the time that goes into this podcast, which is hours and hours go into every single episode, it makes it feel like it's worth it. So you know, please, if you have some feedback, I'd love to hear from you. It really helps to sustain me and keep me energized in creating these episodes for you. In today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about complaining. And I also want to talk about how we talk about problems and things that are issues. So I'm going to split the podcast episode into two, two sections and we'll see how it all kind of comes together. And the funny thing is sometimes we complain even about how much we don't like people who complain. And it's really funny because I've definitely caught myself doing this, especially as I was preparing for this episode and doing some research and taking down some notes. It really had me thinking about just how much we complain. And the thing is, sometimes we don't realize we're complaining because we think, oh, well, they're just facts, right? We think that, well, it's cold outside, that it's a fact, but they're often actually complaints. You know, things like my partner's messy, the weather's crap. My parents aren't supportive. We don't think we're complaining. We think we're just stating facts or observations, which makes us feel that it's true and justified. When we're indulging in our negative thoughts and we're voicing them, it's actually complaining. And sometimes we think complaining is really trivial. So when we have a thought like, no one loves me, or, you know, I'm worthless or I'm a really crappy parent or I'm a crappy boss or something like that. We think, well, how could that possibly be complaining? Because complaining is something so trivial and this is a really big, serious thing. They kind of, they kind of go hand in hand. They're, they're kind of the same. It's it, Complaining doesn't have to be something trivial and we need to start thinking about or encourage us to start thinking about how do we separate that. And then Why are these issues? Because when we have people around us that complain a lot, it can rupture relationships. I'm not saying don't complain. You don't have you can take this or leave it. And I'm not saying that 
all problems are complaints. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about problems after. You know, you can complain, do whatever you like. I'm just inviting you to think about what you express, what's within your control. Because if our brain only focuses on the negatives, that's what it'll keep doing. It's what our, you know, our brains are amazing and they are meant to help us survive. They're wired to protect us and look for danger. So they actually are really good at looking out for what's wrong. And in society, in, in how we live today, that's not necessarily helpful all the time. And so what we do is we let our brain take over. We let it uh, guide us. And maybe that's not always the case. We don't want it in the driver's seat. So it can be helpful to start to think about, oh, I have that thought. Do I need to voice it? Do I need to say something here? Where I see that this can actually get quite tricky is it can create tension in relationships. Uh, it can get us in the habit of focusing only on the negatives. And if we keep vocalizing them, people around us don't particularly like that. They find it annoying. They can get irritated. Sometimes it can be seen as, oh, you're going to complain about me or nothing I do is ever good enough. You know, if you're always, if someone takes you out for dinner or, or suggests a restaurant and you start saying, oh, the food was so late or the waiter was really terrible, oh, the meat I asked for medium rare and it came out medium or well done, that person's not going to be as maybe inclined to want to invite you out again if all you do is complain about the service or the food or something else because they might start to think, well, is anything I do ever good enough? You're very ungrateful. I made a lot of effort or, God, now I've messed up. I've done this wrong. So we really want to be mindful of how we're coming across. And it can start to really impact us as individuals. It becomes a bias and our brains just start to look the negative things. And that can sometimes lead to being uh, feeling a lot of self-pity and feeling like the victim. And it can have a big impact on our mental health. It can be something that we wake up and we look at what's gone wrong now or nothing good ever happens to me. And it starts to become a bit of a habit. So how do you stop complaining? It's not easy, right? It's actually quite difficult. And so one thing I encourage you to do is Think about what you want your brain to be. Do you want it to be a, a follower or a leader? And we want our brains to not just automatically dictate what we're saying. Maybe our thoughts are kind of little flags or they're information, but they're not instructions or directives. So being more aware of what you're thinking and what you're choosing to say and, and what you're choosing to focus on can be really helpful. So the first thing I invite you to do is think or simply to notice notice when you have those thoughts and notice what your brain is doing maybe you have physical responses you know a physiological sensation could be a, a tightness in the chest or maybe your shoulders drop in that sort of sad defeated kind of position you might then have thoughts rushing through your head you might then say something or respond in a certain way so starting to notice what's that pattern for you? How do you, can you see it coming? Can you notice what's happening? And while we might not be able to stop the feelings of annoyance or discomfort or irritability or disappointment, we can hold it lightly. We can observe it, notice it, maybe be curious and think about what's happening for us. And then the bit that we can control is what you say what you then do with that. So yes, if your friend has made the effort to book dinner somewhere and you really want to connect with them and they want to connect with you and they've taken the initiative or made the effort to make the reservation and the food maybe isn't great or the restaurant isn't what you expected, you can choose whether to share that or not. You can think, oh, I'm actually, I'm annoyed. I'm disappointed. I'm actually irritated because this is not what I asked for. You might be able to say, excuse me, can I have this is not what I ordered. Are you able to swap it or, or recook the steak? And that's it. You can choose not to say, oh, the steak is not cooked the way I like. Oh, the service here is so terrible. Think about what you're choosing to share. What's in your control is how you respond, what you do. 
the annoyance, the discomfort, the irritability, that might not go away, but we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to share that. So then what about actual problems? Not all problems are equal and not all problems are solvable. Sometimes all we can control is our reaction. And I have two different techniques that I I work with in my practice that I share with clients. I'm going to talk you through each of them and they're slightly different, but they, they have a lot of overlap. And I don't know where I heard this metaphor, but I really love it. There's this idea of what are the good things in life that then come with something kind of crappy. They're inevitable. And I heard this saying, if you have a pony, you have to shovel shit. Okay. So if you keep complaining about the crap that you have to shovel, it's sort of like, well, that's what you get when you have a pony. There might come a time where you no longer feel like having the pony is worth shoveling the shit because you don't ride the pony anymore. Then it might be a decision of, do I choose to keep this pony? So there are these different ways that we can start to see our problems. One is, is this worth it? Is shoveling the manure, is shoveling the shit worth it for having a pony? If I think about how much I love the pony, I like riding it, I love grooming it, I love brushing it, I use it maybe for equine therapy or the kids love it or it's a childhood dream. And it's unpleasant, but I have to shovel poo. That's just the way it goes. So it can be a really helpful metaphor to start thinking about what are the things that, you know, you're effectively (laughs) shoveling that are actually part of something really amazing and good in your life. And that starts to change how we look at some problems. And that takes a level of mindfulness and attention to our environment and what's happening from us. So think about this, you know, I was thinking of the example recently of traveling and when I was in my early 20s, I was so excited to travel and everything was new and exciting and sights and smells and sounds and food and culture. And so I was prepared to do overnight buses and stretch out my budget as far as it could go so that I could experience as much as I could. Now, you know, a good 15 years later, that novelty is not there as much. I still love traveling, but it's not worth an overnight bus trip. It's not worth sitting in the cheaper seats on the train overnight just to extend the experience. So I've chosen now to make different choices because in my case, the pony wasn't worth shoveling the shit for. And so there's different ways we can start to think maybe at one point that was really worth it. Maybe at one point I loved getting up to go to the gym and it sucked that I couldn't sleep in, but that was worth it. Now perhaps it doesn't serve you. So this might link to what you value and what's important. And I will do an episode at another time about uh, values. I have one coming up uh, as an interview about how we choose our values. So that might be a really helpful one to keep an eye out for. So how do we balance the effort and the outcomes with the potential thing that we have to shovel. So that's sort of one way that I would encourage people to think about it. So I'll give you some examples. So maybe owning a home could be amazing for some. There's a sense of stability, a place to call your own, an opportunity to customize or personalize your space. The challenge could be that home ownership requires maintenance and repairs, which can be time consuming and costly. There might be a time where those challenges outweigh the positive aspects. Maybe the amount of (laughs) shit you have to shovel is just not worth the pony anymore. Then you have a decision of what to do. You know, another one could be business ownership. You know, that could be, it involves overcoming a number of challenges that you might get enjoyment from. There could be pursuing your passion, creating job opportunities, achieving a level of control and financial independence and flexibility and the challenge might be financial management competition losing sleep at night managing other humans human resource issues so there might be a time where the positive bits no longer are worth the challenges i'll give you one more example and then we'll kind of we'll see if that helps 
you know, is thinking about volunteering. That might be amazing. It can bring you a lot of contentment, fulfillment. You might enjoy that it gives you back, you give back to the community, you make a positive impact, you connect with like-minded individuals. And the challenge could be that it requires time and dedication and can be quite a significant commitment. So a lot of the things that we have choices over come with that. We, it's, we, we can't have maybe the pony without the shit. Yes, you could say someone else. I can hire someone else to take care of that, but then you have to deal with, I need to work to earn enough money to pay for the person who's going to shovel the shit. I need to have clear expectations and blah, 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 blah. So but let's not try and tangle up this metaphor. Let's just look at it in its really simplistic terms of what are the things that just come hand in hand. And if we spend all our time thinking, again, I have to shovel more shit. Oh my goodness, this pony, it just poops so much. Instead, just thinking, I love this pony and it comes with this responsibility. The other way that, and it flows in kind of nicely from this bit, is thinking about what we can control. And sometimes I draw either on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard these different circles. And I think about our innermost circle and the circle of control. This represents the things that we have direct control over. So these are the aspects of our lives that we can influence, we can change or take action on, which includes our thoughts, behaviors, and actions to situations that we can't control. So for example, it's raining outside. I can't control that. I can choose what to wear. I can choose maybe where I go for dinner. I can choose to wear a raincoat, an umbrella, gumboots, and I can choose whether or not to complain about it, but I can't change the weather. So it's worth thinking about what's within our control. The second circle, so if you can picture it like a dartboard, so that inner circle is the middle bit, then we have another ring around it. This is the circle of influence. So these are the things that you can influence to some extent, but you might not have complete control over them. So this could be relationships, maybe certain circumstances, or you can't control them entirely, you can have some influence. So let's say I'm born in July, for those in, in the Southern Hemisphere, that's winter. I can't change when I was born, and maybe it's not that easy to hop on over to Europe to have a warm birthday. I can choose if I wanted to celebrate my birthday and I want to have an outdoor event, that might not be great in the middle of winter. So I can have a backup plan. I can choose to go somewhere indoors. I can have influence of a few things, but I might not be able to change the weather. I can encourage people to dress warmly. I can impact some of those things. So maybe it's not the best example, but it kind of gives you, you know, a bit of room to think, what are the bits that I can influence? What are some of those things that I might have some influence and choices over? And then the outer circle represents the things that are totally beyond our control, larger societal issues, global issues, news events, and the behavior of others. So I just want to think about this one for a moment. This behavior of others is a really good one to think about. We can actually control how we respond to the behaviors of others. So if you think about, maybe you go to work, and every time you go to work, you're like, oh my goodness, every time I walk through the corridor, I Jane hits me up and just talks, 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 and she drives me nuts, and I'm just so sick of this. You can choose to avoid the corridor. You can choose to say, it's really nice to see you. I have to keep going. But you can't change her. You might not be able to change the fact that she likes to talk, 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 talk. So there are things that we still can have some control over. Bigger news events, global issues, these are something I see cause a lot of distress for people and we disproportionately can focus on those things that we can't impact and that can lead to frustration, to distress, to, to feelings of helplessness if we can't change them. So there are these different areas that we can shift our energy between and if you're listening to this, maybe you want to pause it and draw those circles and actually think what's within your control what's within your influence, and what are the things in that outer circle that you have no control over, and start to maybe prioritize or distinguish between what you want to focus on, how you can then respond differently, and feel like you're maybe a little bit more proactive in some of those, in those choices and in that mindset. 
let me know if you found this helpful. It's something that I, I'm still working on. I'm definitely a little bit of a complainer, so especially since preparing for this episode, I'm trying to be really aware of how that how that comes across and how that impacts me because, yeah, I, I complain a lot and I have, you know, some pet peeves about these particular things in, let's say, Facebook groups, but I keep going into them. Or I get annoyed that I get all these newsletter emails and I get annoyed at them instead of just unsubscribing. So it's a it's a bit of a challenge for me too to put some of these into practice and think about if I want to be kept up to date with I don't know the latest concerts and shows, then I subscribe to the Ticketmaster mailing list, for example. And then if I this if I unsubscribe, I might miss out on something. So I either have to accept that it's going to be annoying and sometimes they'll send me things that aren't relevant if I also want to be the first to know about when the bands that I like are playing at a concert. I don't know. That was a really small example, but it's something that I have been thinking about lately because I'm trying to clean my inbox and I have all these emails from all these different ticketing places that are starting to push out all these concerts, getting ready for the, you know, the summer season. So I hope you found that helpful and how we can focus on the complaining, how we can shift that and looking at problems, how we, you know, separate them, the types of problems, what we can solve, what we can't, how we respond and how we might respond to others. Thank you for listening. To keep the conversation going, head on over to Instagram or LinkedIn and follow me. If you'd like to keep updated with episodes and other interesting things happening in mental health, join my weekly This Complex Life newsletter, where I'll share tools, tips, and insights. There's a link in the show notes. Got a question you want answered? Shoot me an email or a DM. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a rating and a review. It helps other people find the podcast.